So a few nights ago while the draft was happening, someone commented this video idea. So shout out to at tall dude in a suit. Gave me this idea about um, going over the full Aaron Rodgers trade package, everything that went down because now all the picks that were traded between the Jets and the Packers, all of them have been used to select players now. So we have a full idea when it comes to the players that basically swapped hands between these draft picks that were traded last season when the Packers traded away Aaron Rodgers and got some draft capital in return. So let me throw it up right here. The Jets receive Aaron Rodgers, Will McDonald, which was the 20, uh, 23 number 15 pick, which the Packers swapped for number 13. Um, Jarek Bernard Converse, the 2023 204th pick, and then Zach Kuntz, the 23 220 pick. And the Packers get Lucas Van Ness, the 23 pick, number 13. Luke Musgrave, the second round 2023 pick. Anders Carlson, the number 207 pick in 2023. And then this draft, Edger and Cooper, which the pick was number 41. The Packers traded back four spots. And when they traded back, they got an additional pick number 168 and 190. And so they got Edger and Cooper at 45, which is basically, um, you know, that pick they got from the Jets, which was number 41. And then Jacob Monk, the offensive lineman from Duke, he was pick number 163. The Packers traded up from 168 to 163. So that's one of the uh, picks they basically got from the trade to trade back for Edger and Cooper. And then finally, Evan Williams, safety. The Packers used pick number 190 to trade up to pick number 111. So that was used to be able to get Evan Williams. So all in all, I think when you look at the compensation from both sides, I honestly think it's pretty even. When you look at Aaron Rodgers not playing last season, obviously so far the Jets haven't really gotten their, uh, you know, what they were hoping for in this Aaron Rodgers trade because of that injury. Things would have gone a lot differently if Rodgers would have played last year. The Packers also would have gotten more compensation, would have had the, uh, you know, first round pick instead of the second round pick. But if Aaron Rodgers comes in in 2024 fully healthy and has an Aaron Rodgers type year, I still think it's worth it for the Jets. And I think when you sort of grade this trade, for both sides, it, I understood why it made sense. The Jets wanted to finally get a quarterback in there who could play at a top-tier level. They had been missing on quarterbacks for years and years. They decided to trade for a sure thing. And um, the Packers, in, 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 on the other hand, they knew that they wanted to move on to Jordan Love. I'm guessing Brian Gutekinds, that front office, they were pretty confident in the steps that Jordan Love had taken to improve over the years. And I, I think that's why one of the reasons they were willing to trade away Aaron Rodgers. And when you spend a first round pick on a quarterback, to never see that guy play would be sort of crazy. And the fact that Brian Gutekinds drafted Jordan Love, you had to assume that at some point Love would become the starter. And so I think for Brian Gutekinds to be able to get all that he got in return from Rodgers was huge for the Packers. It was a good jump start into the Jordan Love era to have so many picks to use on young players. And considering Aaron Rodgers could have retired, it's probably one of the best case scenarios for the Packers to be able to get compensation for Rodgers who played for them for so long and then to trade him away when he's getting pretty old and to get all that they got back in return. I thought it was a great trade by the Packers. And now when you look at these different players, when it comes to the, the pick of Lucas Van Ness and Will McDonald, those are, I mean, they, they basically, um, you know, would have had that pick anyways. It's just a pick swap. So not much there, even though the Packers did get Lucas Van Ness. Um, but it wasn't like they got an additional first round pick. But the ones that are going to be really crucial to see in the future, really how much the Packer, how much value the Packers got, I think it's going to be Luke Musgrave, who was already playing really, really well before he got injured later last season. But he should be a stud going forward. And then Edron Cooper, this year's second round pick by the Packers, he could come through and really be a big difference maker on this defense. And if those guys continue to ascend and you know, Lucas, Luke Musgrave already, I think, a focal point of the Packers offense. But if Edron Cooper can become a stud on defense along there with Quay Walker, those just those two guys will pay huge dividends from this Aaron Rodgers trade. And then you have a few other guys here. Anders Carlson, hopefully he can improve in 2024. Not sure there, though. We'll see. And then Jacob Monk and Evan Williams. You never know what could happen with some of these later picks. I guess Evan Williams isn't too late, uh, round four pick. But uh, Jacob Monk, he... We'll see if he comes through and if he, you know, starts it off for the Packers in the future. And so all in all, uh, you know, when the trade went down, I understood both sides. I thought for the Packers, it's it's a good decision. You want to move to love. You get tons of picks in return to uh, build for the future. The Jets, on the other hand, wanted Rodgers. I got that. You know, who doesn't want to have Aaron Rodgers on your team? And I, I hope he has a good year in 2024 because I'm still a, a massive Aaron Rodgers fan. But now we have a full idea of this trade. 
and I, I really do like what the Packers got. But all in all, I don't think Brian Gutekinds could have handled the transition to from Jordan Love to Aaron Rodgers that much better. It was really, really good job by Gutekinds, who you know a few years back traded away Devontae Adams to get a one and two. And so the past few years, the Packers have gotten a ton of draft capital by trading away players who were getting a little bit older, play a little bit later in their career, and Gutekinds was able to get a haul out of all those draft or out of all those uh, picks they received in return for you know Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers, which has really set this Packers team up to uh, have a really strong foundation of young players and cheap contracts going forward the next couple seasons. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.